Okay, guys, in this video, I will talk about pre stressing of concrete. Okay, nowadays in bridge construction, especially the pre stressing method is very much popular, and that is why I have decided to make this video where I will discuss about what is actually pre stressing and why this pre stressing has came into picture and how actually you can pre stress any concrete member. Okay, so before starting this video. If you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. So let's start. Before discussing about the pre stressing, we need to know about the concept of reinforcement in concrete member. Okay. So why actually we need to provide reinforcement in any concrete member? Okay. Just consider this beam. Okay. Let's say this is the support and this is the support okay and it is completely unloaded there is no such reinforcement and this member is stable okay but once you have applied load what will happen it will bend like this okay as a result what will happen that at the bottom of neutral axis all the fiber become tensed or you can say that these fibers are under the action of tensile forces okay and you also know that concrete is very much weak under tension so what will happen simply it will crack like this okay so to resist this crack what you have to do you have to provide reinforcement like this okay to carry the tensile forces okay that is the reason why we provide the reinforcement at the tensile zone Okay, in case of a cantilever beam, we provide the reinforcement at top, but in case of a simply supported beam like this, we provide the reinforcement at the bottom. Okay, so that is the concept behind the reinforcement. Okay, now let's say we are not interested to use this reinforcement. Now you can ask me how is it possible? Yes, to eliminate the reinforcement, to eliminate the detailing of reinforcement, to eliminate the use of heavy reinforcement in any concrete member, the only way is to use the pre stress method. Okay, now look into the picture in retrospect. Okay, to eliminate this reinforcement, first you have to know why they were used. They were used to resist this crack. Okay, so the reinforcement were used to resist this crack. Now, why this crack were formed? because the concrete was under tensile stress okay so the only solution to eliminate this reinforcement is to eliminate this tensile stress as simple as that okay now how we can eliminate this tensile stress okay let's look into that so to eliminate this tensile stress we have to apply some opposite compressive stress right so here you can see that in this stress diagram this is the stress diagram here you can see that all the fiber at the bottom of this neutral axis are in compression okay and here everything is in tension so if we can increase the magnitude of this compressive stress okay compared to the tensile stress in that case we can eliminate the tension completely and we don't need to use any reinforcement to carry the tensile stress okay so how is it possible simply here you can see that the moment was applied like this due to the externally applied load let's say this were the support okay and due to this type of supporting condition and this type of loading the stress diagram was like this right now let's say simply apply some counter moment just like a cantilever beam just like the cantilever beam apply some counter moment in that case what will happen all the fiber above neutral axis will be under tension but all the fiber below the neutral axis will be under compression okay so as a result if you initially apply some counter moment you have induced the compressive stress in this zone then when the external load is being applied there is no net resultant tensile force as initially we have induced this 
compressive stress okay so let's dive into the detailing of stresses okay so initially we have applied this force and here you can see that we have not applied this force at the centroidal axis rather we have applied this force to some uh, at a distance from this centroidal axis so there is some eccentricity right so due to this eccentricity you can say that there is some bending moment okay so initially before applying the external load due to this thrust axial thrust there is a stress compressive stress you can see this one and this is simply the load divided by the area cross sectional area and due to this moment from where this moment is coming due to the eccentric effect of this thrust the moment is coming and due to this moment of course at the top there is compression okay at the top there is tension this is tension and at the bottom this is compression okay now apply the external load due to this external load what will happen now due to this external load there is compression at the top and tension at the bottom this is tension and this is compression but initially we have compression throughout the section at the top we have tension and at the bottom we have compression right so finally what is happening below the neutral axis all the fibers are under the action of compressive stress and also at the top of this fiber there is compressive stress so there is no tension at all within this section so we don't need to use any reinforcement okay and this picture may be familiar to you this is the typical girder of any bridge okay here you can see uh, this fibers okay or this tendons or this cables are actually applying that thrust the free stressing thrust okay there is no such river or reinforcement within this uh, girder which actually carry the external load there are very nominal reinforcement that is used for the sinkage purpose that is not load carrying uh, reinforcement okay now how these uh, cables or external stress are applied that is a completely different subject of course i wish i could make a video on that topic okay till then if you like this video don't forget to share it